With Unreal Engine 5 around the corner, I thought it would be a good idea to go over all the features this new version of Unreal Engine will bring, and what it could do for VR games in the future. Let's start going through all the features and advancements. There's actually quite a lot to cover, and more than just a Lumen and Nanite. Let's start with water. Epic have been releasing a new water system in the preview versions of Unreal Engine 4 in preparation for the transition over to Unreal Engine 5. This dynamic system allows you to create bodies of water by simply carving out the environment, and as you do it, it will automatically start to flow, making it really easy for developers to create rivers and any natural outdoor water environment. The water will also react to objects moving through it, like this example when they pull a ball through the water and it causes a wake. You can also set it up so the water foams when it hits rocks, like in this example. Look at how the water naturally runs out between the rocks as the wave subsides. Unreal Engine 5 will also switch over to their new Chaos Physics Engine. This features a fantastic destructive system, which they showcased a while ago using the Robo Recoil assets. This will allow developers to create destructible assets with a click of a button. Those assets can then be dynamically destroyed, and the chunks that come off will react to the rest of the environment in a realistic way. Well, she's in there somewhere, Agent 38. Something that is already available in Unreal Engine 4, but will be used much more in games going forward, will be Niagara. This is their new particle system that allows developers to easily make complex and visually impressive visual effects. It's possible to have the particles interact and respond to the surrounding environment, so having realistic smoke or rain effects that doesn't just clip through world objects will be possible with this system. Another recent addition to the Unreal Engine we can expect to see used more going forward is the new sky and atmosphere system. This allows you to easily create a realistic sky with full day and night cycles, and you can even fly straight out into space, and the transition from planet to space, including the atmosphere of the planet, are all handled automatically by the game engine. They also have a full volumetric cloud system, which will be part of Unreal Engine 5. The clouds are completely dynamic, and the light from the sun will change as it goes behind the clouds. This includes automatic god rays, the clouds will actually cast shadows on the world, and it's all really easy to set up and use. Lumen, which is Epic's own global illumination solution. For those who don't know what global illumination is, currently you can set up a game with real-time dynamic lights, but it only lights up a small area of the environment. In real life, light bounces off of surfaces and materials lighting up a larger area. So you might only have sunlight coming through a window, but because the light bounces around the entire room, it gets lit up. The normal lighting systems in video games don't bounce a light, so if you just place one spotlight shining through a window, only the areas that the light hits will be visible, and the rest of the room will be dark. Developers have to fake the lighting by adding other light probes into the map. This lighting is then baked into the level, which depending on the size and complexity can take hours. Once it's done, then you have to check the lighting to make sure it looks correct, and if you want to make any changes, you have to rebake the world all over again. With global illumination, you can simply place light probes around the world and the engine will do the rest. You can realistically light environments that even the smallest indie developer can make quickly and efficiently. You can use it dynamically in real time, but it's incredibly taxing on the system, so don't expect to see this in any VR game soon. But with Unreal Engine 5, developers will be able to use global illumination in real time in the editor. This means when they are building the levels, any changes they make will be visible instantly. This will make a massive difference to the time the developer spends lighting the games, and you'll be able to make it look exactly how you want, and then simply bake the lighting in once. Lastly, we have Nanite. This is something I've been struggling to get my head around, as it seems like magic, but from a lot of reading, with people ultimately guessing how it works, it seems to be taking assets from the world, and converting them in real time into a 2D plane, so it's only drawing each pixel on the actual screen. It doesn't have to render every single polygon visible, which may be extremely tiny when viewed from a distance. Normally, developers would need to make lower poly, optimised 3D models for their games. They also would need to make lots of lower poly versions of those models for the LODs, which are used for when the objects are further away into the distance. With Nanite, this won't be required. You can import film quality models that have billions of pixels on screen 
because Nanite will convert the entire scene into a 2D image instantly. We don't have any information on how this would perform in comparison to the traditional method of optimising and using LODs, but I imagine the old school way will still result in better performance. It also has its limitations. It needs a very fast solid state drive for it to work. This means it will be possible on the next gen consoles, but might not work on the PC, especially if you're using an old hard drive that isn't solid state drive. There could also be issues with moving geometry. I listened to a developer talk about it, and when they built the Unreal Engine 5 demo, they picked the best type of environment which works best with this tech. He openly said that things like foliage doesn't work well with it, which is why the demo was in a dry desert type environment with lots of rocks. There is also the big question on whether this will work in VR. Will it work stereoscopically, and will they be able to render two separate images this way with low enough latency? And that moves us on to the final part of the video, which is how will Unreal Engine 5 affect VR games? The truth is that we simply don't know at this point, and there are some things like Nanite that I don't expect to see in VR game anytime soon. One thing worth considering is the fact that Unreal Engine 4 has two different types of renderers, deferred rendering and forward rendering. This determines how the engine deals with lighting, materials and particle effects. Deferred renderer is the default renderer used in 99% of non-VR games. It takes all the information from the normal maps, the roughness and metallic of the materials, the screen depth, amongst other things, and puts them into a single render pass. This makes it much quicker to deal with multiple light sources, especially when they are dynamic, i.e. moving around. The renderer can also use that data to do some more sophisticated post-process effects, like screen space ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Forward renderer is more suited for VR games because it's much quicker to render. Epic used this rendering type for Robo Recall and saw a 25% gaming performance over the deferred renderer. You also get more anti-aliasing options. With the deferred renderer, you only have temporal anti-aliasing, which makes things blurry, or fast approximate anti-aliasing, which still leaves a lot of shimmering and jaggies. With the forward rendering, you get multi-sample anti-aliasing, which gives you a much sharper image for VR games, but it does have a larger impact on frame rates. The forward renderer doesn't handle lots of lights in the world well, and putting too many spotlights, especially dynamic lights, will have a massive impact on performance. The reason I mention this is because a lot of these new features are going to work in the deferred renderer, which is obviously not the preferred type of rendering for VR. You can still make games using the deferred renderer, Asgard's Wrath uses this type, but it's a trade-off with visuals taking on a level of blur caused by temporal anti-aliasing, and it doesn't perform as well. So when it comes to Unreal Engine 5 and all its new features, some might not work with VR at all, and some might not only work with the deferred renderer, which isn't the best method for VR games. It isn't all doom and gloom though. At the least, the built-in global illumination for the Unreal Editor will allow developers to make better lit games more efficiently, which will result in better looking games for us, as well as potentially more content due to how much quicker developers will be able to make games. There are other things to consider which would dramatically improve performance for VR, like eye tracking and AI driven upscaling, but I'm going to cover those in a separate video. To wrap up this topic, Unreal Engine 5 looks like a massive step forwards for both developers and gamers alike, but we need to set our expectations accordingly. We don't know how many of these features will work with VR games, and Unreal Engine 5 isn't going to be released to the public officially until late 2021, so don't expect to see any games built in Unreal Engine 5 for a while. And that's the end of the video. If you made it this far, then I thank you, and I do appreciate it. 